The Swedish black metal band Marduk is very odd because not only are they one of the most popular black metal bands, but a lot of black metal fans actually really dislike this band. In fact, look at some of the scores on Metal Archives with their more popular albums, and some of them are retarded low. A lot of people really hate this band and call a lot of their material Norse core. In fact, I actually used to kind of dislike this band when I first heard them, but I'm here today to prove you all wrong and show you that Marduk are actually worth checking out again. That this Swedish black metal band is fan-fucking-tastic and wrote some of the best black metal albums of all time. So it's time to dive balls deep into the discography of the most blasphemous band in the world. The first album, Dark Endless, it's not good, it's not great. In fact, it's not even fantastic, it's fucking perfect. Every song, front to back, is laser precise, amazing. Every single song is the same quality, all fantastic, all great riffs, all great doomy sections, all great slow songs, fast songs, it's all fucking perfect. Each song you're thinking, oh, this is easily the best song of the album, then the next one just blows your mind, that's the best song of the album, that's the best song of the album, it's just absolutely relentless. In fact, I'm not even sure if I could tell you the best song of the album, maybe narrow it down, it'd be one of the last three songs, because that's when they start to get the most memorable, and they leave you off on such a great note, so it's like, you kind of have to pick one of those songs. But I guess I'll have to go with Dark Endless, the title track, just the way it starts is so creepy, and then the riffs are just so beyond evil, probably the most evil riffs off the whole thing. This song is just so fucking fantastic and creepy. And just the way the album starts with the creepy fucking keyboards, you're in for a ride, you're instantly hooked. I still don't get why a lot of people don't like this one. I mean, it's not really full-on black metal. And that's the thing, these first two or so albums are kind of beating around the bush with black metal, especially this one, which is actually musically pretty much death metal, and the vocals are kind of black metal. But they aren't really at that traditional black metal or even traditional Marduk sound yet. But it's still a fantastic album. It's very different. In fact, it's very different for extreme metal. And it's definitely worth checking out. So on the next album, Those of the Unlight, they actually switched vocalists. On the last album, they had this guy named Andreas Axelson. But on this album, they have the fantastic black metal screamer. That's also on the drums. Uh, J God damn, these names are ridiculous. Joachim Gothberg. And all these early albums are mixed by the legend from the band Edge of Sanity, Dan Swano. So you know this shit is going to sound great. I do also want to know that this band does have quite a lot of lineup changes, but pretty much the main returning member on each album and pretty much the leader of the band is Morgan Hackinson who's the guitarist. Now even though Dark Endless was fucking perfect front to back, this album I think might be a little bit better. The atmosphere is very creepy on this one and it's a bigger step towards black metal but it's still very very odd. Very melodic for black metal and it doesn't really have that lo-fi sound that they would achieve on the next album and pretty much reach what everyone knows to be the black metal sound. There's so many classic fantastic songs, the title track, Wolves, and my favorite song on here, the very, very, very catchy and memorable Burn My Coffee. One of the weirder songs on here though is the seven minute instrumental song known as Echoes from the Past, which feels very weird. Like, most of the song is just kind of creepy, atmospheric build-up, but then it kind of builds up to some cool instrumental crescendos. I actually kind of like this song. Usually I fucking hate instrumentals that go on and on and on, but it really does add something to this album. It does add a lot of atmosphere that I really, really love from black metal. One of the very few times I actually have liked a black metal instrumental.
Opus Nocturne isn't okay. It's not bad. It's not good. It's not great. It's not fantastic. It ain't even perfect. It's the best fucking Marduk album. Marduk, however the fuck you pronounce it. Best album they ever made. And one of the best black metal albums ever. Everything is perfected on this album. The atmosphere, perfect. The diversity of songs is perfect. It's not all blasturbation all the way through. There is tons of diversity, tons of new ideas. The production, perfect. The riffs, perfect. The songs, perfect. The performance is perfect. The vocals, perfect. The fucking artwork is even crazy and memorable. Everything on it is fantastic. You get really weird moments like the title track, which is a lot of weird build-ups to the next song. You have the first song, Soul for Souls, which is a goddamn black metal classic. When it goes into that chorus riff, one of the best black metal moments ever of all time. I mean, shit, that should be the intro to this retrospective if I haven't already made it the intro to this retrospective. You have Untrodden Paths, Wolves Part 2, another fantastic classic. The title track is really bizarre and really cool. But my favorite song is the mid-tempo rocking song, Materialized in Stone. Now, even though a lot of people don't like this band, for some unknown reason, Opus Nocturne is pretty much widely considered a very, very good black metal album. But with the next album, Onward, this is when the band starts, some would argue, going a little too far into that black metal direction where it's turning into complete blasturbation. Which it kind of is, but I still really, really like this material. This next album is very, 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 very much Swedish black metal. Heaven Shall Burn When We Are Gathered is almost blistering the entire fucking time. I really like this album, but a lot of the standouts are actually kind of towards the middle of the album, like Glorification of the Black God, Darkness It Shall Be, The Black Tormentor of Satan. Those are like really, really good standouts. And then my favorite song is right after that set, which is actually another slow number, just like my favorite off the last album, Dracul, Vade Domini, Din, Now, and Transylvania. Probably something about Dracula, okay? My only problem with this album though, a lot of people would say this lacks diversity, but I think it has just enough of it. A lot of these fast songs do kind of have parts where it slows down. However, I will say that I'm not the biggest fan of the last song, Legion. It's just, I don't know, the riffs just kind of don't do it for me on that song. And speaking of Legion, this band actually got a new vocalist for this album. A guy named Legion that does a very, very great job. In fact, I don't even notice that there's a vocal change from Opus Nocturne to this one. Nightwing. I really, really, really love this album. This one could have been their best album if it wasn't for that last fucking track, which is kind of like an outro track, so some would say, eh, it doesn't count that much, but... It's really weird. Anno Domini 1476 is ugh. but boy is the rest of this kick ass. Blood Tide XXX. Oh my god, it's fantastic. Of Hell's Fire, amazing. Slay the Nazarene. All these songs are super, super memorable. Easily the biggest slab of most memorable songs they've ever written. And to a lot of people I say this band's music is not memorable at all. Re-listen to this album, you fucking retard, and then you tell me that again. You get like the best songs in a row, Nightwing, amazing, amazing, epic, Dreams of Blood and Iron, a really doomy, badass song, and then probably the most memorable song for me, one of my favorites in the band is Dracul, Wida. Even though it has that shitty ending, it's either my second or third favorite album from them. An absolute classic. If it wasn't for that ending, it'd probably be their best album. Now 
Then we have another classic from the band. That's right, it's a fucking classic. A lot of people, for some reason, fucking hate, hate this album. I will say, though, I do agree that the entire thing is blasturbation. I mean, there is no letting up on this album. There is no slow moments. It's just fucking crazy all the way through. But it's pretty memorable. Every song is fucking fantastic. It's like the rain and blood of black metal. Panzer Division Marduk is one of those albums where you just gotta listen to it front to back. It's all just one song. It's just 30 minutes of relentless black metal. And that's what you're gonna get with this album. It's pointless picking a favorite song on this whole thing. The entire fucking thing, every fucking song, is of the same style, pretty much. You could argue they all sound the same. Kind of true. But if you want just the most relentless black metal album, this will be one of the first I would go to. And it is easily one of my favorite albums from this band. It's very hard for me to rank it, though, considering some of the songs aren't as memorable. But boy, does it leave a hard impression once you hear it. Now we start getting to what many would say the weaker material for the band, and I sort of agree. Even though La Grande Dance Macabre, Macabre, whatever the, however the fuck you say that, there are some definite highlights on this album, especially the epic songs that are in the middle of the album, Bonds of Unholy Matrimony and La Grande Dance Macabre. Probably the title track being the best song with the best riffs, most memorable shit. But there are some weaker moments, mostly some of the instrumentals are kind of eh, and then Death Sex Ejaculation is terrible, Funeral Bitch is terrible. I mean, I like this song, but Jesus Christ sodomized, come on. I know they're trying to be the most blasphemous band ever, but this shit's getting a little ridiculous. Overall, the album's okay. The first half of the album is definitely where most of the good material resides. World Funeral kind of marks a big step for this band because they get a more modern production from this album onward. Even though this is technically like a Norse core album, I actually really, really like this one. It kind of gets iffy towards the middle of the album with uh, To the Death's Head True, Castrum Dolores, and Hearse, but the rest of it's fucking amazing. And it's all pretty short too. Even though I like my epics, it's nice to have a blistering, quick, get in, get out black metal album. And one of my favorite songs in here is the very, very odd bloodletting. It's very, very weird and very different. I like it. I'd say Plague Angel is slightly better than World Funeral. It has more of a black metal production. It doesn't sound as nuclear blast overproduced, but it still sounds modern. And it has the return of badass epics, Perish in Flames, and Blood Trotch. Oh, fucking fantastic song. With this album, they actually got a new vocalist named Mortis. Once again, I don't really notice the change in vocals. I'll notice it on the next album, but here it literally sounds like the exact same vocalist on World Funeral. It sounds just like Legion, and he does a damn good job on this album. But it does have some shitty moments. Death March is kind of eh, and then Seven Angels, Seven Trumpets is complete ass. But it's still a good album. I'd say it's probably the best thing they've done since, I don't know, Panzer Division Marduk. Definitely one of the better albums from the band. If you're into more of that early style, you'll actually kind of like this one. The only problem is that in this era, they're starting to kind of run out of ideas. That is one big pile of shit. Boy. 
boy, do I notice the change on this album. Rom 512, also known as Romans 512, which is a verse from the Bible, is the worst album they've ever made. I have no idea why a lot of people hold this as like one of their classics, because it is by far the worst fucking thing they've ever made, and one of the worst black metal albums I have tortured myself to listen to. There are a few decent moments on this album. Voices from Avagon... Avagon... Voices from Avagonan and Limbs of Worship are pretty decent. And Through the Belly of Damnation, whatever, Womb of Perishableness, ugh. But, goddamn, the rest of his torture. The vocals are retarded bad. Even good moments or different moments is completely ruined by this weird vocal that Mortis does. It sounds like he's vomiting. And it doesn't complement the music at all. The production sounds like complete ass. There's moments on here that almost sound like the production of a shitty new Satyricon album. In other words, it sounds like complete vomit. Why would I want to listen to this? Even the epic songs like Accuser Oppressor are complete shit. And Mago Mortis, complete shit. Almost the entire album, complete shit. And the only okay moments are ones that just sound like regurgitation from like Plague Angel or World Funeral. They're completely running out of ideas, and it's sad because they kind of try to change it up on this album, but the new ideas sound like complete ass. I'd rather just hear you guys regurgitate the same shit because this is just, this does not come. Now, Wormwood is definitely definitely better than Romans 512 but it's still eh, the vocals are still not very good but there are moments where they change it up and it actually kind of works it's most notably different on my favorite two songs the album the first two nowhere no one nothing kind of has that fast black metal vibe but it almost feels like they're kind of going in a bit of a different direction it actually kind of works the production sounds kind of cool and then funeral dawn the second song is my favorite off the whole album it's slow paced it's doomy and it has symphonics that actually really, really works. But there's some shitty moments on here. It gets really, really ugh at the end of the album. And then after those first two songs, it almost makes you want to vomit again. It makes you feel like, fuck, have I been tricked by these first two amazing songs? But then, it, once again, it gets kind of good towards the middle into Utter Madness, Phosphorus Redeemer to redirect Perdition. All good stuff, and then there's a few okay moments. Honestly, the album's okay. They could have done a lot better. We are getting towards the end here, and Mortis finally, finally stops doing that terrible vomit vocal style, and we get one of the best albums the band has done in years. In years. <laughs> this is better than even Plague Angel, the best thing they've done since Panzer Division Marduk. I'd give this motherfucker a 9 out of 10. Almost every song is fucking amazing and different. What you liked before the fast, relentless black metal style, you get that in a lot of these songs again, but the riffs are unique, they're different. This feels like a really refreshed album. The album only contains one shitastic song, and that is Gospel of the Worm. That should be thrown the fuck out, but goddamn, even but even the weird ass song like Hail Mary, Piss Soaked, Genuflection is so different, so weird, and very fucking good. Souls for Belial, Temple of Decay. Amazing, amazing material. But the best song is actually the last song, and even the bonus track, which I don't know why they left it off the album, because it would have been like a one-two punch in this album. Two epic songs. I don't know why they cut that bonus track, because in my opinion, that is probably the best song off the whole fucking thing. You have World of Blades, which is technically the best song, but I think Karam Satani should have been the album, because that motherfucker slays. Now 
now we have the last album from the band at the moment, Front Schwein, and they go back into that World War II direction that they were going with Panzer Division Marta. This album is also very, very, very consistent, very fantastic, another amazing black metal album. But the problem is, is that it's not as good or as memorable as Serpent Sermon, it's not as unique, it kind of sounds like they're mailing it in a bit, but it's very, very good for a mailed-in black metal album. I'll say that right now. There are very few moments in this album that I was very disappointed, bored, or pissed off. It was all very energetic, very crazy, very memorable. Stuff like Front Schwein, the title track, Africa. It's, there's some very, very good stuff on here. It's just not as memorable as the last album. And there is one pretty weak song on here, just like there was one weak song on Serpent Sermon 503. Throw that out. But... Another fantastic epic on here. Doomsday Elite is a go-to song. <laughs> I always thought the title for the song, The Blonde Beast, was kind of funny because it's obviously referring to the perfect Aryan race. And speaking of Nazism, this band actually got in trouble in recent years because they were finally going to do a North American tour. And then like they always do, social justice groups misrepresented this band and tried to label them as a Nazi band. So a bunch of protesters actually violently shut down a lot of the venues that tried to play this band in North America. There was even like smoke bombs thrown in the venue. It got fucking crazy. I would have loved to see this band. So fuck Antifa. Fuck Black Lives Matter. You guys get your shit wrong all the time. I just gotta say real quick and get a little political. In this day and age, almost always when there's some group that's saying we are righteous, we are fighting for like a pure cause, it's almost always complete BS. Whether it's people fighting against what they think is white genocide, or people fighting institutional racism, or fighting for the invisible wage gap, it's all bullshit manipulating you. You fight for yourself, you fight for your own cause, you make your own decisions on what's right and wrong. And because people blindly followed that cause, and blindly followed their leaders, they attacked this band for thinking they were Nazis because they had two albums that had to do with World War II Germany? Give me a break. I've been accusing Marduk of glorifying the Warsaw concentration camp because they had the unmitigated gall to name the album after the same Polish capital city where they also happened to have recorded the fucking thing? Arguing that Morgan from Marduk must be a Nazi because he once roomed with Varg, who of course has made himself a vehicle for Nazi oratory on a fair few occasions. So what? Since I once roomed with a weeb, I guess that means I have a five pack of Pocky in the pantry and a splooge bit Actifa real doll with comfort grip adjustable mandibular jer- <clears throat> Touche Antifa. to the Downfall Network.